Hey, welcome to the Wisconsin Drunken History Podcast. We are your hosts, Eric Sturgeon. And I'm Russell Sorry. This podcast is about all things Wisconsin, history, music, culture, and beer. Although we don't often use strong language, the content is not intended for young audiences, so listener discretion is advised. If you love the bluegrass music you hear in this intro, please check out Dang It's from Madison, Wisconsin by visiting their website, dang-its.com. Now on to the show. All right. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to the Wisconsin Drunken History Podcast, your weekly dose of the Dairy State. We are your hosts, Eric Sturgeon. And I'm Russ Sari. And uh, today's episode, the main story we are discussing is outboard motor legend Olevenrud. Uh, you may recognize that from the back of uh, awesome uh, boats and, and things Heck on the yeah. water. I mean, the the, the Evanrude name has been uh, uh, mentioned and seen for, for years. So uh, we are discussing the origin of him and his uh, uh, watercraft outboard motors. Uh, we also have great Wisconsin music from Tejera. Another beer review. We have an installment of How Many Locos You At? And a special interview with Lake Louis Brewing. We have the man from the can, Tom Porter, coming on. Absolutely. Uh, and as always, uh, please make sure to like, rate, review, subscribe, comment, share, all that stuff. Yep. Uh, we honestly really appreciate any comments and feedback. Uh, the really cool thing is it doesn't only just get exposure to us it also gets the exposure for all of the individuals that we feature on the show the bands and the breweries and that stuff uh so we just really ask keep doing that it's amazing uh and we also wanted to uh uh let you know if you have topics or things that you really think that we should discuss or local articles that you've uh found or discovered let us know uh, you can reach out to us uh, really anytime on any of our social media pages, Facebook and Instagram, uh, or you can just send us an email direct at wi-drunkenhistory at gmail.com. That again is w-i-d-r-u-n-k-e-n history at gmail.com. You can also go to our website, uh, which has some of that stuff on there as well. That's projectcapestudio.com. Also, that will be changing soon, too. Uh, we do have the official rights to a different new URL, uh, so we will probably be doing something with that soon. Uh, so without any further ado, we have a uh, story for you about Ol Evenrud. Another amazing thing that came out of our state is the development of the outboard motor. Today, we are featuring a little history on the man behind the motor, Ole Evenrud. Born Ole Andresin Asludje on April 16, 1877, in Hundeland in the Verdal area, which is now Jovik in Opland, Norway. You may be asking how he got the Evenrud last name. Well, he adopted the name when he arrived to the U.S. Um, from the Evenrud farm in Vestre Toten, Norway, where his mother was born. In October of 1881, his father emigrated to America, f followed by Ole Evenrud. His mother and all his siblings were born in America. The family settled on a farm in the Ripley Lake area, which is Cambridge, Wisconsin today. And we've talked about Cambridge before. Yeah, Matt Kenseth. Yeah, Matt Kenseth. Uh, his garage is there. So. It's a cool little town. They have uh, some Norwegian chocolates and stuff and yeah. really cool things downtown. So. At the age of 16, Evanrud went to Madison, Wisconsin, where he worked in, a, in machinery stores and studied engineering um, independently and self-taught. He never went to college, um, and he had a keen interest in the newly uh, developed combustion engine that was being produced at the time. He later became a machinist and worked at many machining centers in the area. Um, and in 1900, Evanrud co-founded the custom engine firm Klemek and Evanrud. In 1907, development of the first practical and reliable outboard motor was developed which the first one was made of steel and brass and a hand crank starter attached to the flywheel to start the first two cycle engine. He also built his first gasoline powered outboard motor the same year and two later changed the name to Evanrude Motor Company founded in Milwaukee in 1909. The story goes, um, he was out rowing a boat on Okachi Lake. Um, for those that don't know, this is a small lake just outside the Milwaukee area. Yeah, Okachi. Oconomowoc. Yep, Oconomowoc area. 
He was rowing on an extremely hot day, and to cool down, cool him and his girlfriend down at the time, they wanted some ice cream. But they were 2.5 miles from the shore and where the stored picnic basket was being kept. And by the time they returned to the cooler, the ice cream had melted, obviously. And uh, Good Lord. He did, the, he did the man thing that Harley also did. Is uh, What if I put a motor on this thing? Yeah, what if the, I made the this dude thing faster? Thing, the dude thing. <laughs> um, and there, he's, he thought, you know, there had to be a much faster way instead of rowing all the way. Thus leading him to create this masterpiece in our own backyard to replace the ever so slow oar. The company continued its success in 1912. Evan Rood employed 200 workers. Like, like lightly mentioned in our Harley Davidson episode, he allowed Arthur Davidson to tinker in the building, leading to the two legends in our state. So they both kind of have some parallel yeah. history together. I would imagine too. I mean, like like it says here, a lot of this stuff that's happening 1909, nine, you know, the early 1900s. That's really the same time that uh, Harley Davidson was uh, getting getting everything figured out as well. Exactly, and you know, Evan Rude had this awesome shop, so they could both play around with the combustion technology of the yeah, time, which was yeah. newer at this point in time. So Evan Rude sold Evan, the Evan Rude Motor Company in 1913, but always had his hand in the future of the company, and had a say as president in future designs. He sold the company due to his girlfriend turned wife Bess, who was sick, and he wanted to look after her full time as she was the love of his life. Right. In 1919, six years after he sold the company, he helped work on and invented his much more efficient, lighter two-cylinder engine, which was a much improved version of the original. He also sold his part in Clemick and Evinrude Company and later founded the ELTO, or E-L-T-O, um, which is the Evinrude Outboard Motor Company, standing for Evinrude Light Twin Outboards, the ELTO was for. Wow. Yep, in 1921, based on this new improved idea he had, the company faced very stiff competition with others that were up and coming during the the, the including Mercury, also uh, Kickerhofer yeah. from our state as well, and the Johnson Motor Company. He survived many acquisitions in the meantime, as well as leading the competition, eventually forming the Outboard Marine Corporation. In 1921, the Outboard Motor had been perfected, and many people today owe credit to him as they built off the sh shoulders of this Wisconsin legendary figure. Right. Someone's got to kind of kick it off and start it. Yeah, exactly. And in 1933, devastation struck the Evinrude home when his love best died at only 48 years old. And Ole soon followed, passing just one year later at the age of 57. You know, it, it's really sad, but it's probably from a broken heart, just being left alone. I, I mean, I've heard that before, uh, and and I had uh, something very similar happen in our family where uh, one of, uh, I believe it was a, a great aunt of mine, uh, you know, and then all of a sudden, you know, her husband passes, you know, only a short time later. It's just like a really tight connection, you know, and yeah. it's, just, it's hard to deal with the independence when you're so used to having that person every day. You right, know? It's, it's, yeah, it's when crazy. you love them so much. Right. They were both buried at the Pine Lawn Cemetery in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and upon his death, his, his son, Ralph Evanrude, took over the company day to day and eventually earned a spot as a chairman on the board of the company. And in, during World War II, the Evinrude was used on many uh, military operation vehicles, including the Ducks, which you still can see in the Dells and ride yep. around on them. And uh, you can tour around the area as well as other various marine applications. After all the name changes and legal battles, the company we all know today is called Evinrude Alpor Motor Companies and is owned currently by Bombardier, uh, a.k.a. the Skidoo Boys, uh, due to them filing the uh, Chapter 11 bankruptcy in 2000. And yeah. Then, yeah, it's, it's pretty Here comes sad. The unfortunate yeah, part. and so unfortunately on May 27th, 2020, which is why we're bringing this episode to light to keep the company alive, um, Bombardier officially retired the Evinrude brand and exited the outboard motor market. Which is why we did this podcast, as I said before, um, to remember the great things Evan Rude did for the outboard motor market. And uh, many of the ones that we see today were all built off the shoulders of the original design of Olay. Um, this is not a sad ending, as he lives on in our hearts as well. And um, the Olay Evan Rude uh, Award is given annually by the New York Boat Show in uh, recognition of building and creating new technologies in the recreational boating market. Eric, your thoughts on the outboard motor? I know you're a huge boater and uh, you go out on the lakes frequently. Uh, any thoughts? Yeah, I mean, again, I mean, I, I just think the the foundation has to be built by someone. Uh, this individual had the the idea, uh, had the passion and the drive, and uh, everybody else, as you mentioned, is sort of just building off of. Uh, that foundation built by the Evinrude uh, Motor Company and and, Ev and and Evinrude's idea that I want to get my girlfriend back to shore quicker so we can enjoy some ice cream, right? Yeah, exactly. So uh, again, I just I love I love the story. Uh, 
I hate the unfortunate, you know, yeah, nobody wants to hear stuff. unfortunately in any story and know, business or, is business. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it, it, Changing it, times it, markets. And it rarely just, has a happy ending. Right. I mean, you, you live, you live long enough to see yourself either become the villain or, you know, unfortunately pass or, you know, that the company is sold, you know, that kind of stuff. So, uh, the, the better years, the early years, you know, the, in the early 1900s. Great. Uh, unfortunately, you know, he, he had to, to deal with a lot of, uh, really grief oriented things towards the end and then eventually meeting his own passing. But the story lives on, you know, yeah. we're not just going to see Evan rude motors off of boats. Trust me. There are hundreds yeah. of, you know, really old Evan rude motors still kicking and turning some of the newer stuff. I know with the bombardier name, not really good product. I had a, a close friend of mine who had a boat that was only about a year old and the whole motor needed to be replaced Yeah, after a year. And it was an Evan rude product. Unfortunately, it bears the name, but, un- you know, at the same time, it doesn't have the same quality uh, behind it. Yeah. And if you ever get a chance, um, I, I want to recommend everyone go to Pioneer Park up in Rhinelander and check yeah, out the, the Outboard Motor the Museum. Outboard Motor Museum. You can yeah. see all the old designs and uh, just just see how cool they were back then. All cast, handmade, you know, just just phenomenal engines. And, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's going to conclude the main segment for today and uh, on to our music segment. All right. So we have another band from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, these guys are Tejera. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, a great, great five piece, uh, band out of Milwaukee. You really giving me that, that flair of, um, you had a couple bands that you yeah, mentioned. Yeah, I, I really am getting a, a mute math vibe. Maybe uh, some Keen. Keen, yeah. Keen. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just really good. Like a, a pop rock, you know, maybe a little post punk. I would yeah. say, but it's it's phenomenal. It I has. Mean, you can definitely tell. There's a lot of influence here that these uh, these guys are really into some really good music because they took the best pieces of a lot of that stuff, put it into their own flair. And I got to tell you, that lead singer has got oh, yeah. a vocal range and just a, a, a I mean, he's amazing. And um there's a, a moment at about the one minute, two second mark where the music drops out completely and he's just giving you all he's got and uh, giving you that, like delivering that line, that line that everybody's going to know from that song. And it, and it, then all of a sudden that music just bow pumps right back in a second later and really delivers that, that chorus or pre-chorus. That's amazing. Yeah. His voice fits the genre. Like these guys need to make it. And that's why we're featuring them on here to hope we can get some more, uh, do whatever we can. Yeah, exactly. For sure. (laughs) I know that, uh, no, you know, gigantic label head is listening to us at this point, but also I don't know that I wish anybody to sign with a major label at this point. The music business is much better left to independent artists uh, releasing all of their own music and maybe just getting a distribution deal. Yeah, exactly. And uh, definitely check these guys out. Yeah. So without uh, further ado, this is Tajera mad for me.
All right, again, that was Tejera and uh, Mad For Me. The the band is absolutely phenomenal. I 100% urge everybody, uh, as always, to uh, do a little bit of dive uh, on, on this artist, their catalog. They're absolutely fantastic. And again, I mean, just one of one of uh, one of many amazing Wisconsin artists and from Milwaukee alone. I mean, there's just so many. So uh, hopefully while you're on your dive and, and discovering more music from Tejera, you'll find a bunch of other stuff, too. So uh, continue to reach out to us with uh, different suggestions that you have. And maybe you're a band yourself and you want to, you know, uh, uh, be featured. We absolutely take those types of submissions. Yeah. And I just wanted to make it clear because the name pronunciation where we think we got it right, but it's, it's T I G E R a. Yeah. So just so you can go and look them up. Yeah. I thought I'd throw that out there. So perfect. Thank you. All right. So now on to our beer review, this one's really good. So uh, my wife and I went up to, the Wisconsin Dells uh, just a couple weeks ago, and uh, we visited the Moose Jaw slash Wisconsin Dells Brewing Company up there, and we were able to get a, a growler of this fantastic beer that Russ is going to tell you about right now. Yeah, so this one is a special one out of a growler, so uh, no cans on this one, so we can't give you any artwork, but uh, this is a Farmhouse Ale Saison uh, in a Sauvignon Blanc um, uh, cask. So you're getting that oak, and uh, are you getting a little hints of grape? Absolutely. A little grape. This is very wine-like. Very. It has a, it has a very boozy scent to it. Um, very tasty. Um, you're getting a lot of that barrel flavor, too. A little bit of the oak is coming through yeah. pretty strong. Yeah. It's it's very good. Um, it's coming in at 7.9% ABV. And again, Wisconsin Dells Brewing Company, Wisconsin Dells, Wisconsin. But uh, yeah, this one is very good. Um, I highly recommend it. The only thing is, uh, it's boozy. It's yeah, I like it though. Seven point nine, uh, definitely up there for uh, saisons and farmhouse sales and stuff. Uh, but again, the flavor is unlike any other beer you're gonna grab off the shelf. Yeah, it is fantastic. You're it's getting definitely that, like, not gonna be a, a. You're not gonna drink this whole growler in one sitting. You're certainly not gonna have multiple. Uh, uh, glasses of this but um for hey uh, a nice friday night and you're enjoying a dinner or something this is a perfect yeah you're getting a lot of the uh you know it almost has a bourbon flavor from the oak like it yeah. almost has a bur like a good bourbon it's woodsy yeah you know, woody that, yeah, but you're also woody, getting yeah. the, a little bit of sweetness coming through and it must be like a grape of some sort like a white grape i'm guessing or oh, yeah. something along those lines yeah um a little fruity you're getting that oak you're getting a little of the saison farm flavor too yeah um you know a little a little tang too a little bit of tang yeah, but it's it's going down really smooth. Um, it's a very nice color. It's just like a nice golden brown, beautiful. Yeah, it leaves a good mark on the side of the glass every time you finish. Good head. Uh, it, it's absolutely good. Uh, the the beer itself, like we said, it, unlike anything you've ever tasted, and for a great reason, it is a, a one of a kind. I think S- super unique. And uh, Eric, you actually went to the brewery to get this one. They don't offer it in cans currently, right? It's just a release in the bar only. So yeah. you got to go and get a growler. I, or I believe that's the case. Uh, even when we went to their website, this one doesn't uh, necessarily list on their craft brew menu. So uh, when I was there uh, just a couple weeks ago, they had it uh, in in uh, in the ability to do these growlers or you could have like a, a you know a glass of it in the restaurant but absolutely phenomenal it's it's such a good blend of multiple things like you're getting your beer a little hint of like a bourbon booze but then you get like a little wine back finish like it's just all these great flavors in one cup of beer it's just phenomenal yeah, definitely great and and if you're if you're up that way and you have the chance to stop in it uh, you're going to go into moose jaw you're going to look that up as the the place to go uh the uh, they offer a uh, flight of beers uh, that that gives you a good variety of, of the things that they offer. And again, they have a, a, a whole plethora of, of varieties of beers that are in all different styles and they're uh, of the exact same quality. They're great. So 
when you're in the Dells area, definitely stop out at Moose Jaw at uh, the Wisconsin Dells Brewing Company. It is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, and go back and check out our interview with them. Um, yeah. She's one of the first women brewers in our state, the first women brewer in our yeah. state, actually. So definitely a unique brewery. They got unique beers, and uh, please go and check these guys out. Check out this uh, Sauvignon Blanc um, farm ale. It's yeah. phenomenally crafted. 7.9% ABV, so you're going to get a little lit up. But, uh, hey, if you're going out there having a good time in the water parks, having fun. You're doing it. Yeah, you're going to go down some water slides, have a little bit of booze in your system. It get makes slick. it more fun, dude. Yeah, for sure. Get fucking slick, man. All right. So <laughs> we have another edition of How Many Locos You At. <laughs> and this one, uh, I'm over here crying, laughing already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's nuts. I'm just going to explain really quick that in, in this woman's mugshot, she's wearing a shirt that says, one hot piece of American steel. Oh, that's that's pumping some iron right there, buddy. And she 100% has uh, an outdated hairstyle. Uh, a, a little permy, a little permy. Definitely a little, little 90s. It was, it was hot in the late 80s, early oh. 90s. It was hot, but... Yeah, she looks like... Uh, the girl from the White Snake video that has just been hit too hard by uh, the economy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway, give that girl a stimulus check, please. Yeah, she's she's on the list. All right, a 49 year old Toma woman was referred to the Monroe County District Attorney for a fourth offense, drunk driving after the police responded to a November 13th trespassing complaint in the town of Wilton. Uh, So the police were called to a Highway 131 residence where a caller said that this individual entered her home without permission. Now, this could go one of two ways. Yeah. She might have known this person and then they had like some sort of a dispute or... This person is so wet and wild that she actually is entering into a home that she isn't supposed to be in. So we'll find out. The report says that the drunk individual gave conflicting accounts of how much alcohol (laughs) she actually had consumed. I only had a cup. (laughs) I mean, it's the go-to. I had two beers. I had two. She initially told police that she had consumed a couple of drinks, but later said a million Oh, wow. I already know where I'm going at local wise with this. Uh, a million local before, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> before driving to the residence from a bar. So, Oof, you know, she okay. was at a bar, you know, you don't only have a couple at a bar, you know, she's definitely on to something when she says I had a million. Yeah. Cause that's basically what it is. Uh, the report says that the drunk individual smelled of intoxicants mm. and had a bloodshot and glassy eye. Oof. So, she refused uh, a field sobriety test, which is automatically uh, jail time. Uh, yep. You're definitely going. You're going in. You've booked yourself a nice uh, eight by ten. So get in there. She, uh, um, <laughs> yeah. So the police transported her to the Toma Health uh, Center after obtaining a warrant for a blood draw, which oh is what they have to do. Gosh. And after hours, that comes through pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. So what ends up happening is she's going to go to the hospital. And then some lucky uh, hospital worker is going to have to draw this drunk girl's blood. Oof. And uh, now a lot of people do this as like a time-saving mechanism. They think, well, there's no way that they can transport me and get the warrant and then do the blood draw within a couple hours. So the number is going to be definitely lower. But I'm going to tell you right now, White Snake, you've had a million beers. <laughs> You're still over the legal limit. And then they're going to also factor in the fact that you had two hours to, you know, sober up. So it's never going to work in your favor. So uh, the individual was uncooperative with the process and denied doing anything wrong. And uh, she reportedly told staff that she had consumed only three beers at a Toma bar earlier in the day. So what is it? Two, three, a million. Two, three, a million. What did you have? Here, what, I mean, on. did you even drink? Uh, the report also goes on to uh, say that the uh, the individual identified a man who could pick her up from the hospital. That's not an option. Yeah, yeah. You're not going from the hospital to somebody else's house. You're going from the hospital to a jail cell uh, to be booked. So 
she uh, was um, she was ide- or she had identified a man that could potentially pick her up from the hospital nice. if that was an option. Yeah, yeah. The man did arrive uh, to the Toma Health uh, uh, place and a short, uh, uh, but eventually, I guess, told. <laughs> Wait, what the. Yeah, he told her that. The, the, I mean, he explained that she was just out of control. Oh my god! And he was so hesitant he to, to take. Just... Yeah, so she was so drunk, he did not want to drive her home. So, yeah. I mean, there's a lot here. So we got to break this down. This article here. Um, so we have a. Woman... I don't even understand how this was an option. Yeah, it I... says that he arrived at the parking lot, but then also said he was hesitant to take responsibility. I'm for guessing her. she was just so crazy and out of control from what? alcohol. But there would no, there would be no, no way in hell. Yeah, usually you can't get bail. You have to you're sit not in the drunk gonna, tank. You you instantly have to be in and booked. She's she's awaiting booking. Right. She's not over at the hospital after booking. She still has to be transported back to the to the the county sheriff's department or whatever, be booked at the jail, and then she has the opportunity to get taken home on signature bond if that but this is a fourth OWI. There's so, no way that this this is gonna be a cash bond. So what so what are you thinking here? Um Oh. Yeah, well so. <laughs> I'm just saying right now, this is this is pretty wild. Yeah, there's some uh, interesting stuff going on here. Um we have a uh, a drunk woman um, trespassing, um, you know, she's, she's two, three million beers. We don't know how many exactly. have she drank here. We don't have the blood content. They never released that to the public. Yeah. Um, but super conflicting information coming from her herself. Uh, I, I, I really can't explain why there would be uh another uh, civilian involved that even yeah, had the inter- opportunity to take That's her. interesting that they gave her a call and let her get out. I don't know what the laws are up north because that's pretty I far, mean, Toma. I mean, it's not super far up north, but it's up north. You know, it's, 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 it's centered, center of the state. Um, I mean, she is just one hot piece of American steel. What yeah. What, like, what? where do we go from here? Like, so she was so drunk that the guy refused to pick her up. Um, You know, she... I've been at a level where you say... I had a million beers. Have you have you been trespassing though? Like, have you been to that level? I, I've never. I've never. I don't even think. I, I guess I don't know if I've ever trespassed. I mean, I, don't, I have running from the police one time when I was a kid at a party. I went through some farm fields to hide. Well, yeah. So I, I guess that, that, that. Yeah, I guess that. Yeah. <laughs> you said you slept with the coyotes. Oh yeah, I slept down in a ditch with some yotes. They were just hanging out with me, and I woke up and I was scared shitless because there's coyotes all over the place. Like, yeah. I was like, oh my god. I would say here's the thing. I I. I I've been at a level where you could definitely, you know, spout off that, oh, I had a million beers, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. So this is up there. What do you think? I mean, it's just a little bit up there. I yeah. don't know. I mean, trespassing, out of control, and nobody wants to take control of her. And, and I don't even think she has control of what she's doing. She's basically just, if this is an out-of-body experience for her. She can see what's <laughs> going on. She ain't in there. Yeah, glassy-eyed. She's inside her own head, drunk yeah. as hell. So I'm, I'm full on. She's a 20. I would say 20. I was actually thinking the same thing. This is another 20 local for me, too. Yeah, this she is hit, up there. She hit a level of uh, of of loke that, you know, rarely do we see somebody still functioning. Right. But that's why this is, you know, like a sleepwalk, you know, situation. Yeah, yeah. Oof. You, you don't want to wake that person up, let them be for a while. They accidentally did wake her up, and that's why she's like, ah, I don't want to do that. I'm not doing that. So I wanted to state this. So uh, me and Ryan went up to a bar in Cornucopia, and there was a uh, a guy in there, right? And we just went to go get a beer on tap because we both haven't had a draft beer. I haven't been out in a restaurant in about two years. Yeah. So we went out to get a draft beer, and there was a drunk in there that wanted to fight me. Like, this guy was a dirty dog, and he just wanted to fucking throw down, you know? Damn. And, uh... <laughs> You know, You're just when making you, friends everywhere you go. I know. So when when you get to that point and you deal with a drunk like that, that that's out of control, just walk away from that situation like that guy did. Like, there's no controlling somebody at that level of intoxication. You can't control them. If they want to fight, whatever's in their mind, they're going to do stupid shit. Yeah, nobody, you know? nobody wins in that situation. Yeah, you don't win. You walk away because, like... Yeah, you're gonna hurt them because they're drunk and the, on top of they're not their punches aren't going to hurt you because they're trashed. Well, and and you know, the, like I said, the the situation itself uh it doesn't have any means behind it i mean there is no reason that this person wants to fight you they're other just, than they're they're hammered they're out of hammering. their mind they don't even know what's going on yeah so you you could land a couple blows and and they're gonna sit down but 
<laughs> what did it solve? <laughs> right, Nothing. exactly. And like that's why we're like, you know what? Let's get out of Cornucopia and head to Bayfield. It's a little yeah. more civilized. So, but yeah, I I think a twenty loco on this one. If you want to sound the gavel, Eric, you go ahead. Twenty loco. Yeah, I think uh, I think I'm settled. Twenty loco, it is. All right, today we're here with Tom Porter from Lake Louis. Uh, Tom, how you doing? Good, really good. So we know you as the man from the can. I mean, I've definitely sipped some of these uh, Lake yeah. Louis while all ice fishing, so it's awesome to have you on. Well, thanks. Yeah, the cans are kind of a new iteration for us, um, and uh, we're pretty proud of those cans. Of course, my name's and my face is all over them. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, we we love the beer. We've we've actually reviewed a couple on the show already, and uh, but we wanted to get a little background on uh, Lake Louis. How did you guys get your start? Well, yeah, it's an oft-told story and a long one, and I'll make it as short as possible. Uh, Twenty-one years ago, we just celebrated our twenty-first anniversary as a brewery and a brand. Uh, back in the nineties, nineteen nineties, that is. Um, I was uh, working for the auto industry, second tier, doing engineering work, designing automation and or working in factories that did. And uh, and I just decided to chuck it. I was homebrewing for a couple of years, a pretty common story, and just wrote a cartoon of a business plan and looked like I could actually make money making beer. So I quit my job, uh, of sort of kitted out a... Uh, a shed on my property out here in Arena, Wisconsin. I live on 20 acres, so I got a little room to expand. Thought I'd do it for a year or two, go broke, go get a job, pay it off. And 21 years later, I never quite went broke. So Awesome. Tom, I love the story of- because I'm a fellow engineer, and I love that you did that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, one of those, I kind of hit the ceiling. You know, I'd been at that for about 20 years. I was an old man when I started a brewery 20 years ago, and, uh, it was a midlife crisis, either buy a Corvette or uh, build a brewery. So you made the right decision. I love the decision. I think, yeah, I think I kind of <laughs> did. And uh, I can drink my mistakes instead of fixing wrecked cars. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, engineering is a, a really good skill to have when you try to build your own brewery, too. Uh, it was pretty humbling to learn a lot of new things about systems. I had spent an awful lot of time telling other people how to weld stuff together, and then it was my turn. So yeah, yeah, I've I've been in that boat. I'm in the same boat as you. Yeah. And, uh, I've definitely looked into making a brewery at some point as an engineer. I've even designed some stuff on uh, SolidWorks and AutoCAD there, so I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still got my SolidWorks uh, satchel that I carry my paperwork in, but that's about as far as that skill goes. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, Tom. Um, and then we wanted to ask, too, um, with Lake Louis, is there a beer we need to check out, like, ASAP? Yeah, it's Warp Speed, W-A-R-P-E-D, Warp Speed, Scotch Ale. Uh, it's been the flagship of, the, of my brand forever. Awesome. Uh, it's probably 70% of the company, sort of the spotted cow of Lake Louis. And uh, it's just a big multi machine. And um, it's pushing 7%. It's got a lot of bottom to it. Ooh. It's not overly hot, but it's Americanized to the point where it's got some American hops to finish. So it doesn't... Uh, you know, like real scotch ales from back in the day were pretty cloyingly sweet, pretty not great. And uh, and uh, mine just sort of took off. It just trudged along. I was going to make it as a fall seasonal when I started the brewery back in 2000. And uh, I, I made one batch the first fall and never stopped. And it slowly, over the course of three or four years, became the number one seller and still is. Yeah. A um, little bit more uh, history now. When you're talking about building your own brewery, uh, uh Oh, my stuff's for sale. You should call me. <laughs> oh, you better I, uh, believe it. <laughs> yeah, for I, sure. I, uh, I'm, I'm doing an asset list as we speak. Uh, um, the, uh, the the brand, I, I, I merged my, my brand with Wisconsin Brewing in July of 2019. Wisconsin Brewing, uh, Kirby Nelson, the famous uh, ponytail brewer of Madison and... Uh, <laughs> Um, and it, it, they were installing a, a fantastic high-end canning line, high speed, a huge tunnel pasteurizer, uh, all the good stuff that a brewer wants to see his beer, uh, you know, be treated with. And, um, and so we decided to merge the companies. I was at that point where, you know, I was still bottling beer, and there was a point where canning was going to take over, which it has, obviously. And, and uh, 
And so we decided to merge the breweries. And so we continued to run my facility here in Arena uh, for another year or so. And then we've basically mothballed at the end of July in 2020. So it's just been sitting here. And uh, I'm trying to shove some tanks out of the way so I can start putting pinball machines in here. Oh, nice. Awesome. So yeah. cool. Yeah, and this this might age me a little bit, but I remember uh, Kirby from the uh, Capital Brewery, and then he, before he went to a Wisconsin Brewing Company, which is yeah. uh, a while back. Yeah, it's, I think it's six or so years or so they've been in business in Verona. Yeah, he was at uh, uh, Cur- uh, Capital forever, a uh, long, long time, and really uh, was one of those guys. When I started home brewing and buying brewing books, he I think I had bought five books, and he was in the three of the five. Yeah, and I had man. never met him. And so he was sort of this great white hunter dude that I wanted to go meet someday. And then the first time we did get to meet, we became fast and uh, drunken friends from there on out. <laughs> right on. That's what I love is, is when, you can, when you can find a friendship uh, while sharing a beer is the best way to do it, in my opinion. Yeah, it's a pretty amazing uh, uh, fraternity even today. You know, I go back. I you know, when dinosaurs roamed the earth, and I was just starting a brewery. Uh, um, there, there was it was a, a somewhat smaller brotherhood, but it was a brotherhood nonetheless, and sisterhood um, of you know of breweries. It, it, my first batch of beer here at Lake Louie, the guys from the Great Dane Brew Pub Empire yeah. had brewed twenty four hours straight in their facility, so they could be here at my brewery for my first batch just to make sure i was okay you oh, know wow. so that's cool. the kind of thing and bar the old borrow a cup of sugar kind of thing is it's yeah. still true today and uh it's a pretty amazing thing uh, i worked in the auto industry uh, as i spoke of and uh you know if you were seen if i worked for chrysler at the time and you saw you were seen having a lunch with a guy who worked at gm that was it that was your ass right right <laughs> yeah for and sure. that's like the racine versus uh janesville area right yeah Oh, yeah, man. Oh, man. Yeah, GM Janesville, baby. Exactly. I worked at Gilman yeah. Engineering down the street. And, awesome. Uh, and so, yeah, it was a, a whole new world when I started the brewing business. I thought, boy, this is awesome. And, and it never has gone away. I mean, such great friends I've made over all these years. Awesome. But Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that camaraderie that we hear of so often, whether it's new or, or old, uh, of the, the brewers of Wisconsin, uh, and especially this kind of uh, Milwaukee, Madison, and a little bit northern area is amazing. It's just it's so it's refreshing to hear that so many of uh, of these individuals are friends and not just competitors. Yeah, it is. It's a very friendly uh, uh, rivalry, I would say to this day. There's none of that cutthroat Pepsi Coke kind of stuff. Going I love on. yeah. And, and Tom, I got to say, I, I love that you uh, are an engineer and that you enjoy fishing because we love the artwork on the cans. Uh, yeah. As fishermen ourselves, we, we love it. Oh, uh, yeah, cool. You know, the joke was is I worked 90 hours a week uh, running a brewery for so many <laughs> yeah. years. I, I didn't even own a fishing license. And here I got an old uh, single hook popper as my uh, as my logo. And uh so now the, with this uh, uh, merger with Wisconsin Brewing, my big dream now is to be able to take a few days here and there and, uh, you know, go fishing. Have so. some vacation days, right? Well, Tom, yeah, I'm, well, I'm kind of hoping for part-time in the next. I, I, I'm trying to move into Professor Emeritus status at the at the Verona facility. There are a bunch of young, super capable people there yeah. and, uh, you know, with a whole bunch of altruistic uh, attitude and, they're, you know, they're not – they're not old, worn-out uh, gaskets like I am. Awesome. I love the WBC facility out there, too. It's very nice. So yeah. awesome. Yeah, it's soft. You know, with COVID crazy, uh, the, the facility, you know, for to the public has been closed all winter. And hoping uh, the soft opening is planned tentatively for April 1st, and it may just be that outside uh, seating area and outside bar. Uh, to start with, we're going to kind of play it by ear there, but really looking forward to getting back the crowds uh the, uh, are so amazing there and you know having bands and food trucks and just all kinds of pop-up activities and just a killer facility yeah in tom uh once once all the stuff is kind of over with and uh if you ever want to grab a beer and cast a couple poppers in one of the lakes around here yeah. you let us know we'll share a beer with you that sounds like a plan. Hey, uh, I actually, uh, uh, to see what I was getting myself into here with your podcast, I was 
I kind of listened to a couple of them. Do you guys have the Dang It's on as a as your like opening song? They are. Band? Yes, the we do. Yeah. It is literally our theme. Yeah. Is that the same Dang It's that are around the Madison area? It that's, is. That's the one and only. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, I got a story about the Dang It. Let's okay, hear it. Back yeah. in an earlier life, when I was a young man. I had grandeur thoughts of being a big rock star guitar player, and I tried it for a few years. And you know, that's the, you know what you call a, 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 a musician that doesn't have a girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, homeless. And uh, <laughs> and uh, and so Tom Wazelchuk, who was the the dude of the Dang It, he, and uh, he gave bluegrass guitar lessons. And I thought, boy, what a great way to get a. a, a you know, a great guitar technique is to take bluegrass. So I took guitar lessons from him for something less than a year. And so whenever I would see him play out uh, on all these years past, since my brewery days started, he would introduce me to the crowd by saying I was yet another person he had successfully uh, steered away from the music business. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, guy, great band. What's the famous Oasis lyric? Uh, Never put your life in the hands of a rock and roll band and yeah. let it all fade away or whatever. It's like, yeah. that's yeah. exactly it. It's yeah. just... <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, the other one is, is you know, uh, you know, the difference between a jazz guitarist and a rock guitarist. A jazz guitarist plays, or a rock guitarist plays three chords in front of 3,000 people. A jazz guitarist plays 3,000 chords in front of three people. That's exactly yeah. it. Uh, yeah. That's the it's, truth. It's, uh, it's, you gotta kinda, it's a tough business. Let's just put it that way. Hey, it's and, tough and to get rich. one of those ones that Russ and I know all too well, we're both failed musicians as it is too so <laughs> that's the truth oh, no that's, kidding. that's yeah. why we're putting these microphones to use a different way <laughs> yeah exactly i know the feeling yeah. i own a few guitars uh i actually, actually collect guitars so i got way too many of them and, and uh and i had a good friend a couple of musicians friends stop over this week and, and they were like yeah these starting to look a little dusty there and i'm like yeah <laughs> you know yeah with yeah. with uh it happens I, as you know, as an engineer, sometimes your hours are a little crazy, so sometimes you don't get to touch that guitar for weeks. Yeah. It's pretty brutal. Yeah, I'm just, you know, I, I, but, you know, I've paid a lot of money killing brain cells all my life, <laughs> and, uh, and so it's really kind of a fun hobby for me because I can relearn the same song over and over and over again now. So. Yeah. Exactly. And, uh, the, the best use of time right there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How do I play that song again? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, just give me the first three chords, man. Just give me the first chord. I'll, it'll come back. It'll, it'll, it'll all come back to me. <laughs> all right, Tom. Uh, bef before we let you go, we uh, always yeah. ask our guests, uh, how Wisconsin are you? It's about eight to ten questions, and uh, we want to see how you fare here. Okay. Sure. All right. The first one I got for you, um, what do you consider to be up north Wisconsin? Man, I used to say anything about Highway 2, but that's pretty far north anymore. Yeah. I'm getting older. I think probably, I'm guessing Wausau North, take a horizontal line. Yeah. Because I've been in southwest Wisconsin all my life, so, you know, to go up north is to pretty much, you know, the, in the old days was whatever you had to stop for gas and to keep going was north. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, exactly. It's, <laughs> I always say, uh, you know, when you get out of Wausau there, when it goes down the two lanes, that's pretty much where you're up north. Yep. Sure. So, yeah, when you start seeing pine needles everywhere, you're yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, right. Sandy soil and pine trees is pretty much yep. all you see. So. Yeah. All right, so next one. Have you ever tailgated at a Brewers, Packers, or a Badgers game? I would say yes to all three. Oh, the trifecta. the trifecta. Awesome, Tom. You've hit them all. I've, yeah. uh, I, I, I've, I've tailgated at Badger games where I never made it into the game. <laughs> you just had a little bit too much fun in the parking lot. <laughs> yeah. We've all done oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, I, yeah. I can't say the same for Badgers, but I can definitely say the same for uh, Brewers. Tailgated oh, that, many times happened. without even having a, a step foot inside. Yeah, it happens. Hey, buddy, when you're sitting in the back seat, we're going in. So, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. we've all been yeah. there. I've slept in the back of a pickup truck in the parking lot of County Stadium more than once. Well, oh. I could hear the <laughs> awesome. more times than we care to admit. Right. All right. So, uh, have you ever been to a supper club, and do you have a recommended one? Oh man, there's so many of them around here. You know, still surviving and doing well. There's one in Spring Green, which is the next town down from me, called Arthur's, which is a pretty decent Arthur's. they've got the they've got the salad bar with that 10 pound block of cheese and a awesome. knife stuck in it you know yep, yep. and you got to carve off your own it, 
the COVID shut them all down right now, but they, they, they exist. Um, yeah, there's just a million of, of great ones in the state. I don't want to play any favorites, but Toby's uh, just on the south side of Madison. Yeah, we've uh, had Toby's. Toby's recommended multiple Toby's times. Is a, is oh, a, man. That's a Killer. heavy hitter. Yeah, it's just, man, best old-fashioned on the planet. Yeah. Oh, awesome. And and that's all also how they uh, tell you how to how to prepare for the weight, too. They say this is about a two- to three old-fashioned weight. Yep. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but then everything's ready. When they call you for your table, it's they've there. taken your order, man. It's one of those, you yeah. know. I mean, you're you're ready. You're rocking. You eat your food, get out. We need the table. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They do it in such a uh, nice, nice manner, too. Yeah, exactly. Next. <laughs> yeah. All right, next question. Have you ever been to Summerfest, and do you have a favorite band that you've seen? Oh, my God. Yeah, I would probably say the Eagles with Joe Wall. Oh, I sat up yes. on top of the hill, and the sound was perfect. And, you know, of course you know every note. You guys are failed musicians like yeah, me. Yeah, color me green. Note. I am envious of that. <laughs> yeah. you're singing, Damn. You know, you're singing harmony into your poor, suffering girlfriend's ear while they're playing. It's, Shouting you know, it. Yeah. Yeah. Missing every it's, note off pitch and everything. Yeah. I Man, think I've seen a million local bands there that are so good. You know, I, I think uh, I embarrassed my girlfriend. Uh, we went to uh, Winslow, Arizona, and uh, you better believe I sang those lyrics when we were on the corner. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was annoyed, but hey, dude, the Eagles are <laughs> so good. I, I admittedly have never yeah. seen them, but uh, yeah. wow, you know, even that with Vince Gill night. stepping in, you and know, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. And now he's got yeah, exactly. Glenn Fry's son. Playing. Oh There's my, yeah. God. so many good ones. Yeah, yeah, unbelievably great band, probably the best ever. You know. Best backup band you guy could hope for. Oh uh, yeah. Have you, so Tom, have you ever heard of all the weird theories between behind uh, Hotel California? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh man, there's there's a I think there's a whole group of conspiracy. Yeah, right. Probably books have been written about Kalidas in the air, and yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah and they're like that's pot smoke. That's got to be pot smoke. Yeah. yeah. I mean, luckily I've got that out of my system. But back in the day, I was like thinking about what you know, like stabbing with their steely knives, but they just can't kill the beast. I'm like, oh man, you know, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was so deep back then. Yeah. I'm like, what? Yeah, it's not. exactly. Yeah, <laughs> we're right. just talking about yeah. drugs. <laughs> yeah, but that band was a great band early on. I mean, uh, I had dinner with Randy Meisner, that was uh, a former bass player. He's passed now, and yeah. uh, he was their original bass player. And I actually had the for- good fortune to have dinner with him one night. And, Damn, and, uh, just super nice people. That's awesome, Tom. So we got two more for you before we uh, let you go here. Um, for beer brats, is there a uh, beer you recommend from Lake Louie we have to try with beer brats? Yeah, you mean to tell you the simmer them in? Yeah, yes. just kind of finish because them there's off. There's a couple of, there's, there's actually, if you're ever in the Madison area, go to Kanaki's Meat Market on Old uh, old Middleton Road in um, uh, sort of the near west. And there's another place called the Jennifer Street Market on the east side of Madison. And they both make brats with my beer. Oh, wow. And they oh, both what? make warp speed brats. Warp and they're speed. actually in the brat. It's killer. Um, I make, uh, we make a, uh, my porter is an, an old fashioned English porter, but it's actually a lager, uh, very uncommon for, uh, porters in the Midwest. And that reduces so well. It's funny you should mention that because, you know, I got some brats soaking in a, in a can of porter right now. Good. For, that's what I'm having when I get off this phone. The snow is, and, the snow uh, is melting and you are ready. Yeah, exactly. And I'm doing a beer can chicken too with tequila awesome. though instead. And uh, nice, yeah, it's warm out. I'm rocking. That's flip flop weather for me. Yeah, absolutely. If it's 40, I'm 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 on it. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, those are my favorite brats. But yeah, the, any dark malty beer because it reduces so well. Yeah, you know, a lot of people use really hoppy beers uh, to simmer uh, meats in, and uh, I'm I'm a, I'm a, I want the I want the the unfermented sugars coming out of dark beers. I think it sweetens up the. That's a the great food. point. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I have to agree with you on that one. And uh, as we say on the podcast too, above thirties, no shirties. You break yeah. the grill out and take the shirt off. <laughs> Absolutely. So. <laughs> so well, I just told got Sanders. a new grill a week ago. It's a pellet. It's one of the pellet ones. So oh, I'm, I'm, nice. a kid, I'm a kid in a candy store right now. So I got a whole new toy. He's grilling everything out here. All right, everything. Tom. Before we let you go, we got one more for you. So, other than go. Lake Louie, is there a, a brewery, a brewery tour, or a tap room we need to visit? And uh, it can be—it doesn't have to be in Wisconsin. Yeah, pr- 
pretty much, you know, I'm, I, I gave a lot of tours uh, at my brewery in 20 years, a lot of tours. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> yeah. and uh, I prided myself on coming and having a pretty decent tour. But I gotta tip my hat to the Klitsch Brothers at Lakefront. <laughs> of course, I, that, and, and if, they're, they're a super famous tour. But it, it's famous because it's the best. It is, yeah. I mean, it is the best. You know, a brewery tour is supposed to be a lot of fun. You're supposed to be uh, half half loaded when you get out of there. <laughs> yes. And we used yeah. to give the Gilligan's Island tour here for private parties, uh, the three hour tour, Oof. and. Uh, yeah, and uh, it got pretty uh, pretty wild on occasion. Uh, back <laughs> in the day. But that was only if you had a bus and a driver. Yeah, that's when the Gilligan's Island tour would come out. But um, but yeah, I gotta say Lakefront. I just gotta. It's the best tour. It's the funnest tour ever. I I agree. I agree. But Tom, thank you so much for your time on a Sunday here. Uh, we really appreciate your time, and uh, we can't wait to get this one out there so people can hear about Lake Louie. Cool, man. I'm excited. Thanks a lot for thinking about me and giving me the opportunity. You know, I've gotten a lot of press over the years, but, uh, you know, we could use a lot more always in this industry. This is a tough time for the bars and, uh, and a lot of breweries aren't as tight. uh, You know, we're just not, we're working, you know, we're working to make it and uh, hoping that uh, the vaccine kicks in soon. Yeah. That was honestly the, the, the motivation behind this podcast back in, uh, what was it early may or something like that of 2020 so you know that's that's exactly what we wanted to do yeah we wanted to spread a little history and uh, get the word out there for people to go once this covid thing's over hit up the bars hard hit up the breweries go go support wisconsin and all you can so uh yeah thank you tom appreciate it thank you both appreciate it and i'm looking forward to uh to having that beer and uh, maybe uh, drowned in a worm or something. Oh, you better yeah. believe it. We're down for fishing anytime, so you hit us up. All right, bud. All right, Tom. Right. All right, bye-bye. Yeah. Take it easy. All right, that concludes this episode of Wisconsin Drunken History Podcast. If you enjoyed this vulgar display of Wisconsin, please like and subscribe on whatever streaming platform you prefer. And remember to hit the bell on YouTube to be notified when we release new content. Also, if you have any suggestions or ideas for future episodes, please send us an email at widrunkenhistory at gmail.com or head over to our Facebook and Instagram pages. Thanks again for listening. And remember, as always, watch out for deer on your way home.